Riders are being charged a hundred times their fare. Uber and Lyft pays drivers to protest. And a group of rideshare drivers bully another driver. It's This Week in Rideshare News. Hey guys, it's kind of a slow week, but I found some gems for you, so I hope that you guys hold on tight, because I'm working, I'm doing this for you, I'm doing this for you. My first story is an interesting one, kind of a key key. Several Uber passengers found themselves getting charged 10 times the amount, okay, that they were supposed to be charged. As reported on Twitter, because that's where we're getting all our news right now, several people were complaining about owing $9.73, but Uber actually taking $9,730. <laughs> My uh, take on this was like, y'all got that much money in the bank? I mean, I just want to know who's got the money and who doesn't. But apparently, people took to Twitter to complain about it. It's funny because you see all these news organizations reaching out to get like a, a comment from these people. But more importantly, I don't see Uber support like responding to really most of these people. And so you can imagine if you're paying way more, I mean like way more than you owe, and uh, not being able to call somebody. The takeaway from this, and I'm probably going to do this too, is to make sure that my debit cards that is, are tied to all my money are not linked to my Uber account. From this point on, I'm going to tie my Uber to the accounts where I just keep a little bit of money in there. Because if you try to get $9,000 from me, you won't be able to get that Uber. I'm going to let you know right now. It's not happening. If you want to hear more about this story, there's a link in the comments. About a month ago, Jay and I came up with a video called The Perfect Rideshare Company. Both he and I came up with a scenario that we thought would be best for rideshare. I was reading the New York Times and I read an article about how drivers can beat Uber and Lyft at their game. And one thing I'm sure I didn't think about and possibly Jay didn't think about either is that Uber prohibits drivers actually organizing, but we never thought to forming a corporation. And according to this article, I'm going to read it to you, if drivers incorporated their own joint venture, they could reduce their antitrust liability exposure risk while protecting their ability to coordinate in their negotiations with rideshare companies and their interactions with customers. So um, drivers would maintain the same compensation structure and flexibility as they do contracting directly with the platforms, working flexible hours, receiving per right salary commissions while donating a portion equivalent to the amount they might otherwise pay in union dues to their newly formed Uber Drivers Incorporated. So uh, there's a lot here in this, um, in this article and I don't want to read it all to you, but I don't think I've heard anyone ap approach this this way. And I really think that someone should try it. I really honestly do. I think that if drivers were to create their own company, and I honestly think the truth that the best in rideshare is yet to come, and it will come from a bunch of drivers, people who've been doing this for a long time, coming together and creating a solution that will benefit all. And so um, I'm going to leave a link in the description regarding uh, this article and our link to Jay and my video, which I'm sure <laughs> you guys are going to have a lot of comments about, especially especially my scenario. It wasn't very solid, but it was a fun conversation. But while we're talking about AB5 being passed and, um, and moving to, you know, to the Senate, a lot of people are involved in the conversation of creating a better scenario for independent contractors, and especially for drivers, because there's millions of people who are on the road here specifically in California doing this type of work and I know it's split down the board who wants to be an employee who wants to remain an independent contractor but bottom line if AB5 passes uh, drivers stand to to, ha to live a better life to make more money to have more benefits to be able to uh, plan for retirement and that sort of thing and though I like the independent contractor status I think that if people prefer to drive for a living or, or prefer to make money this way for an extended amount of time, you should be able to receive benefits as well. So that's my take on it. Um, let me know what your thoughts are. I don't think I've asked you guys that question yet. And you can find those links to the video that I discussed and the article in the description. 
Speaking of AB5 passing and there were rallies in Sacramento and I thought I heard this in Ezra's video. I thought I heard this. There was a guy that said something about I'm just here for the food and the money. I thought I heard that. The only reason I'm here is for the free food and, 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 and I was also promised a hundred dollar gift card. Yeah. According to the Los Angeles Times, there were several Uber and Lyft drivers that were paid from the amounts of $25 to $100 to attend the rally. And um, let me read this verbatim. Drivers who attended the rally were offered and expected to receive $25 to $100 within five days of gathering in Sacramento to cover travel, parking, and time, according to the email that the Times, Times obtained. The email was sent to drivers from the from the I'm Independent Coalition, a group funded by the California Chamber of Commerce along with a long list of professional associations, trade groups, and on-demand companies, that particular rally was organized by Uber. The money was noted as a gift and thank you for traveling and supporting the rally. Uh, I believe it was intended for people who already felt strongly about maintaining their independent status, but uh, yeah, I thought it interesting that the Los Angeles Times picked up on that. And some politicians feel like it is a worrying trend that some companies are willing to pay for support and that some of these people who are actually accepting the money possibly need it and don't actually realize that the long-term goal of this bill is actually intended to help them. And so uh, there's more. <laughs> In this article, if you are interested, that link is in the description. If you attended the rally and you received money for it, um, let us know. If, if anyone was brave enough actually to share that they actually support or not support, not support AB5 and that you attended the rally and you received monetary compensation for it, let us know what your reasons were. Did you just want the money? Did you already feel like you were in support of AB5 not passing and they just gave you a nice little you know, money for your time, uh, let me know in the comments. For those of you that are in support of AB5, uh, hearing that some of the attendees were offered money, how do you feel about it? Curious about how you guys feel. Let me know. And now for my favorite segment. It's called the What Would You Do? And this one is a little complicated, but I think we might be able to come to a solution. Some of us anyway. So I was reading the, um, the forums the other day and I came across this one. It's a guy who's being bullied by a group of other drivers. And if you drive in an area all the time, this is something that could potentially happen to you. Let me read his note. He says, so I'm being bullied by a group of Lyft drivers that are making foul and horrific accusations to others in Lyft. Police are involved and even got my account put on hold until an investigation was done. Lyft investigation team was amazing and got proof and confirmed all the accusations are false. So I'm back up and running and it only lasted a couple of days. But I can't drive out of the airport due to the amount of harassment. I'm not sure what that means. The, the things they are saying and doing are disgusting. Could someone please give me advice? Working at the airport queue a few days a week is the only way I, I make what I need weekly. Lyft is helping, but please can someone help or give me some advice? Now, we don't know enough to know what... Uh, how to help he or she. I don't know what's horrific. I don't know what's disgusting. But I do know that this person is being bullied. And this, like I said, is something that it, there's potential of this. In fact, I have heard of occurrences where some drivers have seen other drivers doing things they didn't like. And they immediately take pictures of their licenses and contact Uber or Lyft and say, Hey, this person's doing this and this person's doing that. Like basically drivers are lying on each other. This person is is asking how to, I'm assuming, how to keep from uh, going through this. It's an easy, easy solution. You, you need to either, one, not drive at the airport or change your hours. Uh, they can't, they aren't that tight where they can have the airport unlocked 24-7, drive at another time. But this also goes to show you this is a reason why you should have a dash cam. If they're saying that you're doing certain things, if you have a dash cam to prove that, hey, well, what time did they say it? Because I was doing X, Y, and Z, there's your proof. On top of that, I would always encourage you to change up where you drive. Change up where you taxi, where you hang out at in between places because people, especially people who are looking to pick up your habits, like they're interested in your life, they're interested in what, what you're doing, they see you all the time, they're going to 
they're going to be, be able to easily find out where you are and what you're doing. It's not that hard. If somebody just followed you around, they could figure it out. And if every Tuesday you go to the airport between 5 and 7 and you do X, Y, Z, then it won't be hard for them to figure out what it is you do. And, and a lot of times drivers are curious about what you're doing because they want to see what works for you. If it looks like you're doing something, if, if it's effortless for you to make money, especially when I first started, a bunch of people were like messaging me like, oh, where do you go? What do you do? Why? Because they wanted to do, they wanted to do what worked. They wanted to, they didn't want to think about it. They didn't want to have to try to do it. They just wanted someone to help them. And they were like, all I need is for someone to think and tell me where to go. I don't want to have to do that for myself. So, in a market, especially if it's really competitive and it looks like you're doing well, then they're definitely going to come after you. But if they're, it sounds like to me, like y'all couldn't be making that much money for you guys to be paying attention to each other. And I wouldn't put myself in a, in a place where any group of people would sit here and be concerned about what I'm doing. So if I would try to find a way to not be drive while these people are driving or to not drive in this area at all. What are your thoughts on this issue? Have any of you experienced this before? I know it's bizarre, but like I'm sure it's happening to plenty of people, especially in smaller markets. Let me know in the comments. I really appreciate you guys hanging in there with me week after week. It's really awesome to read your guys' comments. If you're not subscribed to Harry's channel, please do so. That button is below, the red button. Hit it, subscribe. And if you're not sure about who I am and what I do, my name is Cecily and I have a channel called Drive Girl Drive here on YouTube. And you can also contact me with news stories and tips on Facebook. And uh, what else? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Hope you guys have a great week and I'll talk to you next week. I'll be having some stories for you. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.